So today's camera, Kodak Retina 1B, Big B, and this one is the Type 0192, and it differs from the 0191 in that it has a bright finder instead of the a finder much like the original. What? And this is the ancestral form, if you like, of the 1B. This is the Retina 1B, type 018. This is a, an early example, as you can tell, because it's got the silver dot in the middle of the film advance lever, which is somewhat uncommon. And it was only present on the early production. This one could probably do with a service too, I would imagine. I don't know whether I've ever serviced this one or not. I might have done. But it's been in my collection for a long time. So I just about guarantee it could do with a service as well. But that's not what we're here to deal with today. We're to deal with the Retina 1B Big B. So, here's our 019 Type 2. This is another 019, again 0192. This one's different. You see it's got this feature here along the top of that body. There's a line there. On this one, it's completely smooth there. This is the latest type, the newest of them all. This one here that crease that you see all along there, that moulding, that was like the earlier cameras. So, as you can see, there are a few wee variations. But this is the one we're dealing with today. And this one needs to be stripped down and serviced. So I'll step you through it. You can see I've got the instant light diffuser with this one. That's lucky. Usually they're lost. I'll pop that case to one side, and that needs repaired anyway. And we'll start on the camera. I'll clear the decks. I need to get rid of these other cameras. So, taking this thing apart, where to start? We'll start by removing everything from the top. First thing I'm going to do is remove the meter dial here. I'm just checking this meter. It appears to be dead. The movement the needle swings with and you swing the camera a bit, but it's no response to light at all. So it's very likely that the meter movement is open circuit, and we'll find that out in due course. If this had been a camera that was working and running, uh, and everything had appeared to go nicely with the meter, I'd be checking here to see where everything lines up. So with my dial turned hard clockwise to the stop, I'm looking here to see where this mark lines up, and it lines up just below the 18. That's, um, and if I was putting the camera back together, I'd have to make sure that the scale went back at exactly the same spot. And then I could be reasonably confident that if the meter had worked well beforehand, it would work the same afterwards. Anyway, this has got to come apart. We need the dial off here first. Do not lift the top of the camera off with that dial in place. This is quite scratched up, that screw. Someone's done terrible things to it. It's quite possible that someone's had a go at fixing the meter before. This screwdriver is just uh, one I've made myself. You can see I've just ground away the end to leave two points to engage with that screw. So we'll have that off. Under that is a little wavy washer. Then we've got this death disc. That's not going to go through the ultrasonic cleaner. Here's the ASA scales, film speed scale. That will certainly not be going through the cleaner. The wavy washer, that can. And here's the main dial. That will be, have to be cleaned by hand too. Anything with painted numbers on it, you need to clean it by hand. 
otherwise you are really asking for trouble. You're going to have to be putting all those markings back in place. Alright, rewind knob. Open the back of the camera. Something through the fork of the ray, rewind. Spin that off with my fingers. I'm going to take this apart. Um, just because I'm stripping this camera right down. That will not go through the cleaner. Neither will that piece, otherwise you'd lose that little black tick mark there. A wavy washer can. Get the spacer there. That's uh, black anodized aluminium. I'm not going to put that through the cleaner because I know from experience that it might come out faded and I won't be happy. So, two screws here, one at the end. Chrome plated brass, easily damaged. Use a good screwdriver. Be cautious. Lifting the top cover. Keep my finger firmly planted on the meter so it doesn't lift off with the top cover. Lift away the top cover. And this exposes the viewfinder. Now the viewfinder here is um, virtually identical to the viewfinder in a Retinet 1A. There are differences. Um, I can see there's a, a mask or something right here, a little steel mask. The lens at the back here is glass, not plastic. Um, but otherwise it's much the same as it would be on a Retinet 1A. Same, same method of construction. And when we get to the cleaning of the top cover, I'll show you all of that. This has got a little bit of sand and rubbish in it, nothing too dramatic. Put that to one side. Bring the camera back into the picture. So, now we start to see the bad stuff. Here, there's a flaming great ugly screw there that's got nothing to do with Kodak. So that tells me that, oh, it feels nasty too. Wherever that screw came from, it shouldn't have been there. I'll take the strap leg off at this end. That's loose. It's mate's loose. And no harm with that when you're taking a camera apart. Take the last remaining proper screw from the rewind post there. Flathead or countersunk. I'll take this apart, clean these pieces. There's the center section, we have that separate. That piece again, that's black anodized. I'm not going to throw that through the cleaner, I don't want it coming out pale grey. Remove the shutter release button. I'm looking at the meter, it's not held down with a screw or anything, it's simply hooked under the end of the bracket at that end. So I'll take my meter out and that's a dead meter but I'll put that to one side for inspection later. Go back to the camera top. I'll remove the rele uh, release button, film release button and the spring I'll put to one side. The strap lug can come off, two screws And it's always worth checking under this to see if there's any spacer washers or sometimes sometimes you'll find a shim there. Here, there's a shim under it at this point. That's all it is, that brass washer. It's a shim to support the bracket. It does not support the rack. 
this bracket here needs to come off. Well, a screw here, that's simple enough. This post, it's got two flats on the base. Now, if you're clever, you can get in with a pair of uh, pliers. You want to make sure that they hit the post and nothing else. I can't get them in here past this thing. You might be able to if you came in from the side. But you don't want to mar the post itself because if you do, uh, you'll find that the release button doesn't press down easily. I've got a tool for removing that thing and it's this. It's a screwdriver. All I did to make this was I cut the end off a cheap screwdriver, stuck it in the lathe, bored a hole up the middle of it, and in this case I used a mill but you could just as easily use a file. I cut a slot across the end of it to leave two tangs to engage with the flats on that shaft. We have that off, and this piece, this bracket, again check for spacer washers, shims under there. Um, if there are any you need to recover them, you may have to use them again, you may not. The cocking rack, I think we can lift that out of the body. It's uh, The grease is a pretty dirty looking, but that otherwise looks reasonably good. The chrome trim should come off the top now. That chrome trim plate can come off. It can be cleaned. And take the screw out of the middle of the film advance here. Now that one, I'm going to replace that. That should sit flat on the top. That's been screwed down hard. And that, that screw actually looks like it's cracked at that point there. That's unreliable. I'll replace that. Because it's deformed, it probably means that um, there might be a bit of movement in here and you could end up with problems with your film advance. So remind me to replace that and put it back together. Here's the gear on the top that couples with our cocking rack. Then we have a plain washer, thin washer. Then we have this drive dog. Here we have this piece, this is all dirty and greasy. This little spring here, this leaf spring, that lifts that plate and it keeps the drive dog engaged. It also allows it to disengage on the return stroke. Let's take that gear out. There's a shoulder screw here. Now that shoulder screw holds down this bush and gear assembly and the shoulder at the top supports the shutter cocking rack to prevent it pushing away from the gear to any large extent. On this side and there's the occasional tight screw in this camera we have these pieces the screw with a return spring on it, which I'm going to remove. A little ratchet pawl, which stops the film advance from backing up. And the post, the uh, little bush that goes underneath that ratchet pawl, bringing it to the correct height. It's going to open the front and just check to see if there's a spring loose underneath the film, the shutter release here, and there is. We'll leave that for the moment. Um, I want to get the door off this so I can show you where that spring lives. I'll flip the camera upside down. I've got to be careful not to lose my shutter release. Now here, I can see a hole in the leatherette at this point. That tells me that the screw is backed out of the hinge at one stage in the past. Um, that's not uncommon. I'm going to remove the tripod socket surround, two small screws, chrome brass, easily damaged, use a good screwdriver 
of the appropriate size. If it's too wide, you'll just bite into the aluminium of the surround and the screw won't want to come out anyway. Take this cover off. And there's a return spring here. Be careful not to lose that. That one's in quite good condition. Sometimes they're mutilated if someone's fought with it trying to get them the mechanism back together. The leatherette disc needs to come off the film advance lever. Here I'm being careful not to let the shutter release get away. It's sitting on the bench top. See if I can get this leatherette disc out here. Worth taking your time with leatherettes. There are no new leatherettes, or near enough to no new leatherettes. And cutting your own is a nuisance. Three screws there and they do not want to move. Okay. I'm going to put a rubber band around this shutter release now. Just to stop it getting away. I'm going to have to fight with this obviously. That'll do. And these screws are not going to want to come loose. One's buried under adhesive. And leather it and uh, a bit of corrosion. His mates aren't much better. No, the screwdriver is just lifting out of the slot there. That's not good. Make sure that slot's as clear as I can get it. The, there's a couple of things that might be happening here. The screw, the thread of the screw might be uh, bound in the, the female thread of the film advance, or the head of the screw could be bound to the aluminium uh, film advance lever just through corrosion. With that rust that I can see there, basically that means the head of that screw will have expanded, it'll be bit, bitten in quite well to the aluminium, and it won't want to come out. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, solvent on there, see if I can lubricate that slightly, and then I'm going to thump it with a hammer. Right, here's some naphtha, cigarette lighter fluid, let's put a drop on there. Now I'm going to use a heavy screwdriver and I'm going to hit that with a hammer while applying a bit of torque and see if we can get those screws to come loose. It's not looking very promising. I'll put this up on a block of wood. Alright, let's try this. One. That one's not coming loose. That one is. So two out of three you've shocked loose quite quickly. We're looking at those screw heads. They're not really showing any corrosion under the, the head of those screws. So why they should be so tight remains a mystery. I'm going to have another go at this remaining screw.
that too. Yeah, that screw head's not particularly happy. The slot was not particularly deep. It'll be fine. Take off the shutter release lever. And I'll get my leatherettes off now. So taking a scalpel, get it under the leatherette, being quite careful. Now here I am levering up the leatherette as much as I'm cut. I'm not really cutting anything. I'm just sliding this in. It's acting like a wedge and peeling the leatherette up. It's stuck firmer here and probably here. That's because this chrome trim here is, um, responds differently to the adhesive than the aluminium body casting which is exposed through the centre here as you'll see when the leatherette's off. So I usually start from the ends work back towards the centre and from the edges and work back towards the centre as I say it's stuck more firmly to the aluminium body there Now here I'm using a quite a bit of pressure to make sure my scalpel blade slides in firmly against the casting and doesn't lift up into the leatherette and slice through it. That means that there'll be scrape marks on the body. That's okay. The leatherette comes off nicely. So here you see it was lifting off easily around the chrome trim here and it was stuck quite firmly here. There's um, seven screws holding this trim on. At the moment I just want to get that front door off so I'm going to remove the hinge pin screw from the bottom of the door. I'll open the door, remove the hinge pin screw from the top of the door, now quite possibly there's a spacer washer here so I'm just going to slide the door out and see if there is one, there's one at the top, a shim, make sure I don't lose that. There may be one at the bottom as well. Let's tip this upside down. I'm being careful not to lose my shutter release. Yes, there is one at the bottom. I have that too. I can lift the door off now. That's pretty greasy. I don't think those struts are bent. I think that's good. And there's a lot of dust and rubbish forming on the table already here. But what I wanted to show you was the shutter release here. I'll zoom you in a bit. Right, a bit difficult getting this camera to focus down into there. But you can probably see there's a coil spring here. A compression spring. That acts on the shutter release shaft here. If I lift that shutter release shaft out, that spring is just floating in space there now. If you let the shutter release shaft out of your camera, very likely that spring will escape as soon as it's given an opportunity and it will fall down into the gap inside the camera here between the shroud and the bellows. If you don't know that's happened, what well, the next thing that happens is when you go to close up the front of the camera that spring will be somewhere it shouldn't be, it'll end up getting munched up. One of two things happens, either it prevents you from being able to close the front smoothly or it'll get somewhere where it lodges and it'll stop you from being able to open the front door fully. So watch out for that spring. Do not remove the shutter release shaft from the camera or allow it to fall out until you're quite sure that you've got hold of that spring somewhere. Likewise this piece, which is called the sleeve, 
that is floating in space now not very much is holding that there if you give the camera a few lumps and bumps you can be sure that will also want to fall into that space and then you've got to dismantle the whole camera to get it back okay so that was that we've got our shutter release out of the camera 